Welcome back everyone to part four in a series on web components. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. So up to now, as you know, we've been looking at different frameworks. We've been looking at lit element. We've been looking at angular elements. We've been looking at stencil.js, but today we're going to look at a kind of a registry for components, a space that allows us to share and collaborate on our components. It's kind of like NPM, uh, but specifically for these type of web components. And as you go down, you can see that it's not just for one single framework. They allow you to share components created on multiple different frameworks. And that seems really interesting. So what I understand of this so far is that if I create a component in React, or if there's already a component that I have from maybe a different project created in one framework, I can import it into another project using a different framework really easily. So let's see what that actually looks like. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the features, we're gonna go through, we're really gonna understand exactly what it is that Bit does, and then we're gonna uh, try and upload our progress bar component that we've been creating in the last few videos. And I'll link all of those videos down below just in case you wanna go back and refresh your memory on what we've done up to now. We'll get that component thrown on here publicly, uh, we'll sign up and, and we'll see exactly what we can do with this service. As always, if you're finding value in this video series, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to hit that notification bell. We've got one more video coming in this series on Svelte, which is one more framework, and then we're gonna go through and we're gonna assess the whole field. We're gonna talk about the positives and negatives of web components right now, what works, what we feel doesn't work. I actually threw up a comment on Reddit, on the JavaScript subreddit, and got some really, really cool feedback from others about what they feel the state of web components are right now, what they've liked, what projects they've created using web components, and uh, we'll go through all of that in the last part of this series, so look forward to that. But anyway, back to Bit. Let's start with the features. Share components between projects to build faster together. So essentially, Bit helps your team develop, share, and sync components across your projects from development to production. So this is actually something that you come across fairly often when you're working in a company that has multiple projects. You're gonna create a component for, or a feature for one project that you wanna share across multiple. Uh, maybe it's got different context, maybe you were, there's different user personas that you're creating these projects for, but you want those that feature to be shared across them. There's not really an easy way to do that right now unless you just copy and paste. So you create like a public or a private NPM module that contains those components and then you pull those in. The uh, complexity comes when you, you, you essentially create a whole other project that you have to maintain as well. So if you make an update on that component in one project, you have to push that change and then you have to load it back into all your other projects and it can become really really hard to maintain the same component across all your projects so i want to see whether bit allows you to manage that in an easier way they do say it lets you isolate and export hundreds of components without refactoring and it helps you easily share develop and manage them at scale so it does look promising that that problem could be solved with this tooling. It's interesting that they're also focusing on the social aspect of it as well. So making it easy to share your components. You know, as a developer, you don't want to recreate the wheel. So finding something like a custom progress bar maybe, <laughs> or a loading bar, or anything like that that's already been created, saves you a lot of time. And you get to benefit from the ingenuity of others. All right, seems like the features are pretty standard, you know, uh, it's really going to be a case of let's just dive in and see what we can do. So I've thrown up the quick start. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install the CLI. I'm going to pull up one of my previous progress bar components and we're going to see what we can do with this. All right, just jumping into the documentation quickly. I'm just in the quick start. I haven't even gone through anything else. I assume that the quick start should be enough for us to really get our component online. And then we can go through a little bit and, uh, and dive deeper into how to create the documentation and how to, to add those little extra bits. What's really interesting here is the workflow diagram that they're showing. So number one, track, and that's kind of where we are right now. We've initialized a bit project. 
we haven't put a component in there yet so that's the next step uh, then we will publish that so that's step two here and that's going to go into the cloud then others can consume it myself or others can modify it so if i'm in a team-based setting if i'm just open sourcing a component we can collaboratively modify this component make changes make it better push it back up and then it can be merged and merged the other way as well so let's carry on setting our component up Okay, so what I've done is I went into a previous project that we've created together, the Angular Elements Progress Bar component that we'd created in a previous video. Again, link down below if you're interested in going through that one. We have initialized bit on this project. We've added the component, the progress bar component. I also created a namespace hashtag coder. I added the Angular compiler and then I built and exported that component into that namespace. So when we log in, when we look at my profile, here it is within the hashtag coder namespace. There's a progress bar, it's an Angular component. What I really like here is that they have a playground that, that you can load and you can actually test the component with. Looking at the documentation here, it seems pretty easy to install the, the new component in your project so you can actually use npm install so you're going to use the bit namespace so here it would be username so it would be shadow teddy dot hashtag coder dot progress bar and then save or you can specify a specific version here i just versioned it as version 1.0 and then we would just import the module into our app module in another angular project there we go it'd be easy to just add that component in you know, we've understood the value proposition here, especially I can see some uses uh, in the Angular world. I've had some instances where I have components that I wanna share between projects and it does get really complicated to share those components between them. Uh, this makes it really simple, makes it easy to, to uh, control version, to import these new components in. All you need to do is make sure that they have their own modules and everything is encapsulated, all the dependencies are installed, uh, really, really easy to manage. I actually uh, quite like this. I'm interested in using this within the context of an actual project rather than just messing with it. As for the documentation, seems really thorough. Gives you tutorials on how we could have done this with React. Maybe I'll do another video where I'm using bit with React and showing you guys how I actually use this in a real project. Uh, it's got tutorials for Angular, Vue, Node.js, uh, everything about how to set your environment up, how to track, build, test. They actually really focus on testing. Uh, they have a continuous integration process that they have in the background just to make sure that the components that you're creating are passing their tests and aren't degrading any functionality that you may have in your existing project so it's really cool to see how robust this environment is they've got documentation about versioning documenting exporting a bunch of guides so you know really really good there there is one thing here that they do have a free plan, but generally, if you're on a team, you'll probably wanna pay for a, a couple of accounts. Uh, they actually charge per user. So there's a team plan and a business plan. The community plan, in fact, if we go there real quick and have a look, the community plan gives us three private collections and unlimited public collections. As far as support, it's really just community support, which, which they have a discussion board for. It's a Discord board here. 
looks not that active if I'm honest with you I mean there's like 37 topics since July 20 since July 18 uh, there's a little bit here it's not really gonna get you where you want to be uh, as far as support goes you'll probably if you're if you're using this uh, within a professional setting you'll probably want to go with the team or the business plan which charge uh, per user per month all in all it's interesting i think the the most value that you can get out of this is if you use it for a real project and not just mess around with it next time we're going to be looking at svelte the last framework that i'm going to be reviewing as part of this series really excited about that i've heard some really great stuff about svelte and then we will sum all our thoughts up we'll look at the reddit thread that i have going and we will sum up what the state of web components looks like in 2020. If you like this video, hit that like button below, subscribe, and make sure you turn on notifications, and I'll see you next time.